Doc, how can your man run again? I thought he was a convicted criminal or something. He fixed the road. But sure, he robbed money. What like. are you talking about? My father voted for his father, and you'll vote for his son. He fixed the road. Can you see me and everything? Yeah, it's all coming up. Is the so lens pointed towards me, and I am being captured? It's just you. Thank you. Thank you and nothing else. It's the best dressed man in Dublin right here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very Harry Grant today. <laughs> I was going for more for Don Draper. Oh, were you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, enjoy. Cheers, cheers, buddy. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sorry, come on. Yeah. Uh, the star and creator of The Savage Eye on RTE and uh, soon to be stand up star for I'm So Happy, which is live at Vicar Street yeah. on March 5th yeah. uh, of this year. Yeah. David McSavage. Although, if this is reports, don't, don't any of you fuckers come to, to my show. <laughs> you just all your bad vibes and your misery and your fucking bitterness will fucking ruin the whole thing. So just stay in your bedrooms and wank yourselves to sleep. And do us all a favour. Did I just say that out loud? You just did. Okay. I'm going to score. I'm going to score a goal. I'm going to score a goal. I'm going to score. I'm going to score. I'm going to score. No, you're not. You're going to miss. Uh, yeah. So when I put up this thread on boards, there was a lot of different reactions to it. But one that I was very amused, amused by was... Somebody who said, to tell him he's a fucking legend and it's brilliant to see somebody fearlessly tapping into issues in Ireland the way he is. And in future, I won't run away from him in the street, I'll high-five him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's an awful lot of what, questions. What a, what a little condescending wanker. No, no. Well, well, um, well that was my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> what a when beautiful thing chat. to say. There we go. What a lovely thing to say. Uh, yeah, that's nice. I haven't done a street show in about a year, I would say, so, you know, I don't know. Taking a break from the street, which uh, you know, it, down in Temple Bar, he was getting very, I was getting lots of complaints and so on. It was just a pain in the hole. So it's good though, as well. Um, I've been doing, I've been street performing for so long, you know. So it's good to do something else. You know. And can you bring us through why you started um, comedy? Like, mm. where it was that you? It was uh, just, if you, it was just from, uh, you know, I was uh, performing. Uh, I think I was in Japan. I was playing music. Uh, no, what was I doing? I can't remember. How did I start? Yeah, I, I found I made more money making people laugh. That was right. it. That's it. Okay. And then, so it was a natural evolution, and then I fetched up in Denmark, and then, a, you know, usual thing, comedian, or somebody sees somebody and think, oh, I'm funnier than him, and then that's it. And then, yeah. then the slow, inexorable uh, rise to semi-success started there 18 years ago or something. And you would be very known, you would have, your street performance would have been very known for pissing a lot of people off. Yeah. Like, how did you account for that to yourself? Well, well, well the, the thing is that uh, n n more people enjoyed it mm. than were pissed off. And you have to ask yourself, like, why would somebody be so pissed off about, so there's a lot of wobbly little personalities walking around, they have a very high sense of who they are, and if, you know, they walk through a show, or they're made fun of, uh, their sort of sense of who they are sort of collapses like a house of cards or whatever, and uh, they want to get back at you. And you know, but they, and and they, but it'll never be enough. They, could, they ha I mean, how many times can you call somebody? He's a cunt. He's a this. He's a that. He's a that. So you know, but ultimately, you know, it doesn't matter really. Uh, what, what was the question? I was just thinking of something else. What were you going to say? Uh, well, oh I, yeah, I, I, oh yeah, yeah. No, you're making fun. Yeah, you're making fun of people. Uh, yeah, but sure, that's what we do. That's what we do in Ireland. We take the. In fact, when you know, when you're friendly with somebody, you take the piss out of them, and when you don't like somebody, you're very formal and so on. Mm -hmm. So we do have a very slagging culture. And um, was there you know, a line I mean, for you though that where you you go? But I mean, there, there are real past. things to be pissed off about. There are real things to be angry about, uh, and I don't think I'm one of them. I mean, you know, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think you've answered like five questions in just oh, that right. little bit. Oh, right. But what I'd like to know is sorry, the experience buddy, of, no, no, the experience of doing Savage Eye, does it make you want to do more t TV, more than live comedy, more than the stand-up shows, um, on the street, more than that? Um, well, I must say, like, putting together, um, Putting together a comedy show like this, I mean, it's an intense amount of research because mm -hmm. e each each episode, you know, and the base of you know good good satire, good joke, you know, does have to have truth in it. So you're 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 talking to a lot of people, informed opinions, which which does add weight to the documentary, um, and then you know, uh, you know, coming up with the actual sketches with with the with the other writers, uh, you know, and and. Uh, 
you know, the creative process, it's not pretty, you know, it's fucking ugly. There's a never ending stream of shit ideas coming at you. And you know and then and then here's here's another terrible thing as well. So you have you, you have a joke that is verifiable, it's brilliant, it's been tried and tested, you know it works. And it works in, in a stand up uh, venue. And then you, you try and transpose that into a situation, but suddenly the funniness fucking disappears because it's only funny when you're saying it and it's in people's head and they can imagine it, but when you actually build a set or try and recreate it, it, it so, so there's lots of, uh, I can't even remember the fucking question now. I can't even remember the fucking question. You have drink here, all together. You have drink here. You try it now. You have drink here, embrace your inner culture. You have drink taken. You have drink taken. Use the wind and rain. You have drink taken. That's not bad, no. All together now. Lose your hands, you. Lose the hands. Wait, you try it on your own now. You try it on your own. Lose the attitude. Lose the attitude. Come on. Lose the attitude. No, that's no good now. Go on now. Try Lose. it again. Lose the attitude. There's a guard in there somewhere trying to get out. Go on, try it again. Lose the attitude. There you go. Are you moving more? Do you find it easier to move into TV oh, right, than, right. than the, the bus game? Are you enjoying yeah. that? Yeah. Well, it seems to. I mean, the TV thing seems to be a bit more successful than the uh, than the than the stand-up. I mean, for me, the busking the busking thing came out of uh, just be fired from so many jobs when I was younger, and then it travelled around the world. But the thing is, you know, when you're travelling, you can busk, you can busk. But I, I, I stayed. I've, I stayed in Dublin. Well, I have been staying in Dublin, and you know, I think when you're Doing the same show and the same jokes for so long in one area, it does people's head in. And also, people, if you if you're doing comedy that people don't like, they tend to take it like you're trying to personally insult them, you know. And uh, you know, but but it is funny. Like I mean, when you get comedy wrong, it really elicits hatred from an audience. I mean, I've seen and it's happened to me many times. Um, where, and especially in Ireland, like in the UK, they can disassociate themselves, like, okay, there's a man, he's fucking up, it's nothing to do with me, but here we're sort of very much in people's heads, we take things personally, people stand up. It's the funniest thing, actually, is when, you, when, when you're telling jokes uh, that women hate, but the guy, there's a guy maybe out with that woman, and he's out for the ride or whatever, and he can't show that he's enjoying it, because he doesn't want, you know, because he wants to keep sweet with his girlfriend, and that's quite funny, when, when the girl is like that, and the guy's trying to edit himself. Anyway. And do you think that it's you personally um, and more so your background mm. that people can't take because you, you come from a political family, yeah. your cousin is Ryan Tuberty yeah. and all of this kind of stuff. Yeah, that's so right. there was posts that, uh, on the thread going, well you only got the, the show due to Fianna Fáil nepotism. Yeah, well that's true. That, that's the only reason I got the show, uh, Fianna Fáil. <laughs> so that was good. So, so you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know, no, no, I rang up Fianna Fáil. No, I know, I didn't know, but I mean, that is true. Their fears are all realised. Uh, we do run the country. Um, be, we are the ruling class and the scum, which they are, uh, you know. So that's the way it is. You know, we, it's, everybody knows that, right? You, you know, what, no, yeah. I, I rang up my dad right. and I said, Dad, Daddy, can I do, I really want to do a TV show on RT. Will you ring up somebody? And they said, yeah, and then... And, and then they got me writers, and it was great, it's just great, so I'm delighted. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, I'm going to read this question to you. What are the problems that the Irish television industry presents for first time creators or writers, and how does the general yeah. lack of a pilot system affect yeah. creators? No, very good, very good question, that, I must say. Um, well, first of all, I have a sign up in my fucking office that says RTE owe you nothing. So don't look to them for fucking any answers, because they're not going to give you any. They have none. If you want to do something, do it yourself. Be totally self-reliant. If you want to make a pilot, get your flip camera and fucking start just rehearsing with the camera and and write it yourself. Um, <clears throat> and um, what was that? What was that question? Again? Sorry. Was so, that... what are the problems that the Irish television industry present for first-time yeah. creators? And I, th I don't. I don't think people realise how difficult, like you know, a comedy is. You know, to try and come up with the. You know, it's. I mean, like, like I was saying before, we know as comedians how fucking dangerous it is and how hated you will become if you produce some, something that isn't working. I mean, Jason Byrne did this, this thing with uh, Jackie Howard.
Hamilton or something. It was so, you know some ill-judged fucking show, right. and it really held him back. And he's a very funny live comedian, mm. but trying to transpose that onto TV didn't work for him, and it really kind of and then it just people had this bad feeling and ill feeling about him. So, so I would say uh, if somebody wants to, you know, if somebody wants to come up with a, a show. Or whatever you know, write it out, film it yourself, make your own pilot, which I did with the uh, head, which my father uh, did for me. Obviously, no, I didn't need, I didn't need to do, I wouldn't need to do that. But no, but no, seriously. Um. <laughs> so just go out and do it yourself. Uh, absolutely, man. And, you know, and forget because because you're just getting, getting, you know, do it. Don't look to any of these cons. Nobody will fucking, nobody cares about it. you. Have to make it. Don't don't hand in a paper proposal proposal if you're trying to. Because I, I think this, yeah, I, yeah, sorry. No. Well, but given your reputation, was it difficult <clears throat> difficult to get RTE to commission this? Especially no, for because of my. Oh, because of you've been called right, yeah, yeah, no. yeah. But let's say that no, didn't, it didn't happen. Didn't, didn't, um, uh, yeah, it was, well, I think um, because of the, um, uh, Kieran Walsh, who works for Blinders, the production mm, company that yeah. makes this, he has a good track record and reputation, and also his mate Daniel, uh, Daniel Donald, <laughs> Daniel Donald, we Daniel, we Daniel will be making an appearance in the last episode as a clone in uh, Seamus Heaney's spaceship, he's, he's out in space looking for new, ter new, new bogs, uh, it's very funny. Uh, and for, uh, but anyway, so what was I going to say? Um, what? <sighs> what Sorry, was it difficult to get that RTE to commission? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, what was it difficult to get? Oh yeah. Um, so so that helped, you know. Right. Uh, but I did a pilot before that, and it was a lot of shite, and it was, it was rejected. And yeah. Uh, what are your favourite sketches or favourite character to play or parody in the show? And as a follow-on question to that is. Um, how do the people that you parody, how do they react to you? Like yeah. you do an, a, an amazing blonde in the coffee and you do an amazing... Well, I'm present. glad you knew that it's blonde because it, loads of people said it was Miriam. Uh, loads of people said it was Miriam because I think it was all the babies hanging out and so on. <laughs> but uh, but I, I think I saw uh, a TV show where Blonde was on and there was, there was a woman... There was, a, there was a woman from, you know, from the country somewhere, not very glamorous or whatever, mm. but because she wasn't threatened, because Blonde wasn't threatened by this woman, she was very effusive. It's like, you're good, you're good, because she fucking owned her. Yep. And she, you know, you, and then, then she, they did a makeover, and it was yeah. dreadful. She looked like a fucking badly run turkey in Christmas paper or whatever. And she comes out, and she's as glamorous as a fucking combine harvester or whatever. She comes out like this. And she's really embarrassed. She, she, she feels so humiliated. And she's like, give us a turn, give us a turn. You know, and this woman kind of just did this kind of horrible turn. And then, and then, and then she was a kind of a bit weepy. Right. And she's so embarrassed. But she, blonde, misunderstood her tears of humiliation for tears of joy that she's been changed into this beautiful, which wasn't. But she's so fucking, uh, she's so fucking, you're gone. Gone. No, 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 we're no. Good. She, she, was, she was so, uh, she's so kind of Asperger's or something that she couldn't pick it up. And, and uh, look at you crying, you know, and all this. So she's an amazing study just to watch her. Um, and have there been any other uh, quiet words or complaints from targets look, <coughs> from, let's say, government press officers or interest groups or minorities? <laughs> no, no, no. Which no. is the big one? Uh, no. Um, yeah, with the favourite, with the favourite one to do. Do you know? Do you know what it is? You're so nervous about fucking up and getting it wrong, and you're you're you're, you're writing the script all the way up to the point it's filming. So by the time it's when when you get into it, you're just worried about getting it right. Mm. So there's no point where yeah. Sometimes yeah, obviously you have moments where you're all cracking up, and that's okay. But generally, generally you just you're just worried all the time and, and in a state of anxiety. And you want to be almost better than you can be, so you're just never fucking happy. It's a fucking disaster. Take me to the future, Patsy, quick! What's wrong with you? Tell us, Brady, I owe money, will you drop me in the next week? What do you want to go to next week for? Because I'm expecting a check, I can pay him back. Come on, next week. I'm running low, I can only take you into tomorrow. That's all good to me, I need to go to next week. I'll take you into tomorrow, like. Not worth the shite to me. I need to go to next week. When'd you borrow the money? This morning. I'll tell you what, I'll take you into yesterday before you borrow the money from when you see him ignore him. Just never thought of that. That's why I'm driving. <laughs>